Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Nick. Let's start a new journey. This will be the recipe of love mail version. Let's start. Season 1, episode 1, an unexpected offer. This is a completely different first episode than the female one. Yes, I want to play as a man. Uh, no. No. Maybe. Alright. Confirm. Not so good. Let's change it. No grits. Let's go. What do you want to look like? Ooh. This looks nice. Yeah, this looks nice. Great, let's go. All right. Done. You want to meet a woman. Ooh. So this is supposed to be Tom or Adam counterpart. That's a male. Yeah, that's Adam. So this is Adam counterpart. You look good. Confirm. Great, let's go. You find yourself in the impressive Nolan Enterprises, one of the largest investment companies in New York. You arrived from Louisiana a while ago and after several weeks of intense searching, you finally got an interview for a job at reception. So I've been here several weeks. This place is huge. Whatever job they'd give me here would totally change my life. Whatever job? Are you serious? Good morning. I'm here for an interview for a position as something. A receptionist, you have to go to floor 20, office 2000. Office 2000? What? Just so you know, the CEO of the company's office is on that floor. So am I meeting the CEO? So try not to make too much noise. I'm not. Thanks for the info. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, sir. So helpful. The elevator doors opens. It's so spacious and imposing. Your heart races. Just think that just a few weeks ago, I was working on a stock person at a market. And now I have an interview at Nolan Enterprises. The excitement takes your breath away. You try to compose yourself as you near Office 2000, but you find that the door is closed. You're late. Or not too early. I think I arrived too early. I should knock on the door. Check if the door is unlocked. Take a seat. Yeah, let's just take a seat. Check if the door is unlocked. Why not? It's definitely locked. Alright then. I'll take a seat. All I can do is wait now. You take a seat on one of the sofas and next to it, you find a magazine. You flip through it to kill time, looking for something to distract you. Forbes, 100, alright. Wow, there's an interview with the CEO of Nolan Enterprises. You flip through the pages until you find the interview with Miss Nolan. Anna Nolan started her career very young. In little time, her business grew exponentially. Today, she is one of the youngest billionaires in New York. Suddenly, a strong business smell interrupts your reading. You look up to see where it's coming from. Something's burning. I should investigate. Ask for help. Stay here. Ask for help! No. Let's just check. Your curiosity gets the best of you and you follow the strange smell. I wonder what it could be. Yeah, stove, of course. You enter the kitchen and find a pot burning on the stove. Who did this? Carefully, you take it off the burner as you fan it with your arms to extinguish the flame. Where's the flame? That was close. A red flickering light catches your attention. You get close to examine it. 
What is that? Mod? A phone? What the? Is my lunch ready? I'll be down to get in a few minutes. Your lunch is burning, whoever you are. If it isn't perfect and ready in time, consider yourself fired, Lucy. I'm Lucy. It seems that Lucy is in serious trouble. I should check the pot. Look for Lucy. Check the pot. Where's Lucy? I don't even know Lucy. You take a look inside. What should have been salted vegetables is nothing more than a charred casserole. I don't think this can't be fixed. You look around, having so many ingredients on hand reminds you of your childhood. Grandma Mary. Being among pots and pans always felt like your natural habitat. If only my Grandma Mary were here, she would be fascinated by all of this. Lucy, did you hear me? Where are you, Lucy? Someone sounds even angrier than before. I'm gonna save your skin, Lucy. You're gonna thank me for it. Instinctively, you grab all of the ingredients you need to make combo and you get to work. The kitchen starts to smell delicious and your lips draw into a smile. You'd forgotten how much you enjoyed this. What about your job in the future? It's just missing a special touch to have a real southern flavor. What? Gajin spicy sauce? Alright. You grab your bag and pull out the hot sauce you always carry with you. And you add a few drops to the pot. You try it. You always carry a sauce? Okay. This is simply perfect. Where is my lunch? Yeah, be patient, miss. Or whoever you are. The yelling brings you back to earth. You open your eyes in shock. You can't believe who's right in front of you. Ah, the CEO, huh? It's the CEO. None other than Miss Nolan. Her look of confusion doesn't stop you from losing yourself in the depth of her eyes. Her tempting curves and the thickness of her lips, of course. You aren't Lucy? Obviously, thank you. Aye! Time stops and both of you stare at one another. Gaze deeply. The moment is fleeting. In one breath, her expression turns from confusion to annoyance. Who are you? How did you get in here? How rude. I try to help and she yells at me like that. I should put her in her place. Respond calmly. Apologize. Yeah, he's the CEO and I'm looking for a job. Sorry, I didn't mean to barge into your kitchen, but... Lucy runs in desperately. You notice her look of relief when she sees everything is under control. Thank God. Where were you, Lucy? Lucy, where were you? Did you ruin my lunch again? What an awful situation when a boss reprimands you like this. That will be your boss, though. I've been in her shoes so many times. I should side with Miss Nolan. Rescue Lucy. Blame Lucy. It wasn't her fault. She just got a phone call. Were you really going to serve me this crap, Lucy? I know. The chart one. Lucy is paralyzed. You react quickly and without overthinking, you dish out of a portion of your combo. Here's your lunch. Mr. Nolan. Wait, Miss Nolan. Looks at the dish and is surprised. Where did this come from? From me, of course, and this kitchen. Just try it. You hold your breath as Miss Nolan brings a bite to her lips. Will she like it? The suspense is killing you. You think you see a slight smile stretching across her face. You let out a breath of satisfaction. That's all the validation you need. So you're satisfied? Is it good? Spicy, yes, my sauce. I'm sorry, sometimes I have trouble telling when something is too spicy. 
So, you were the one who cooked my lunch, Mr. Ferrot, Nick Ferrot. Hey, are you trying to steal my job? Yes, maybe. You're doing a poor job, Lucy. Of course not. I came for an interview for a job as a receptionist. But I smell something burning and I wanted to avoid greater trouble. Crap. The interview. I completely forgot. I should leave properly. Come out with a quick... Run? No, leave properly. Excuse me. Someone's waiting for me. It's been a pleasure meeting you both. I have to go. Goodbye. But what? You enter the hallway again looking for Office 2000. You hope you're not too late for the interview. You find that the door is still closed. But now there's a sign that says out for the rest of the day. I lost my chance. So when is the interview? You collect your things trying to hold back your tears. Miss Nolan wants to see you in her office. Me? Why? You try to think of what Miss Nolan wants from you. If she wants to impress you, her office is more than enough. I think this is Sam Nolan's office. This place is impressive. I want to admire the view of the city. Look at the desk. Sink into one of the couches. Okay. From here, you can see New York in all of its splendor. You sigh, looking at the giant buildings, and it inspires you to think that you finally arrived at the city of your dreams. No, this is actually not the city of your dreams. You'll move one day. With a view like this, how could you not feel like the queen of the world? King of the world, you mean? Suddenly, the sound of a car interrupts your thoughts. Do you like my office? Maybe. I wasn't. I just want to sink in your couches. Take a seat, please. You stop stammering and quickly become comfortable. You hope that Mrs. Dolan doesn't you blushing. What? With what? Tell me, why do you want to be a receptionist? Are you going to be interviewing me because I'm late? Something like that. You feel her gaze intensify. She's testing you. So, you're not going to respond? Focus, Nick. It's time to impress her. I want to be a receptionist because I'm right for the job. I want to grow. I want a change. A change from what? I'm right for the job. Maybe. I'm very organized, methodical, and I'm good at working with people. I see. And what kind of experience do you have? I've worked for many years in the service industry and as a stock person in a supermarket. Yes, I have your resume in front of me. It seems that Miss Nolan doesn't mess around. You calm yourself so as not to tremble out of nervousness. I insist. Why should I hire you? Because I'm a responsible, proactive, and hardworking person. I also speak perfect French and Spanish on top of English and I don't need you to recite the information that I have on this sheet of paper. Say something new. Your stomach turns, your hands start to sweat and you begin blushing again. I studied at enough Mr. Ferrot. What do you want Anna? Why don't we quit lying and just tell me something real? You're completely paralyzed. Miss Nolan is deliberately provoking you. That simple sentence shakes your confidence. You start to boil with anger as she continues her daring position. She's trying to break me, but I would give her the pleasure. So what do you want? I'm asking you again. She wants something real. I'll give her something real. I should stay calm with eyes on the price. So she is the price? I don't know. Lose your cool and confront Miss Nolan. Stay calm with eyes on the price. That's true. I only work as a stock person. 
I didn't have many opportunities in Shreveport, Louisiana, right? They have a great culinary scene. The best, actually, my grandmother has always worked as a chef. She raised me and worked hard so I could study. Why did your grandmother raise you? What about your parents? My mother died when I was young and my father was never around. That's why it was always me and my grandmother together against the world. I helped her cook and I learned a lot from watching her. But as soon as I was old enough to work, I started in the stock room. All of the sacrifice turned me into the person I am today. Is that real enough for you? Mr. Farrell? At this point, you know that whatever comes after your name can't be good. You prepare for the worst. I can tell you're smart, hardworking man, and that you're sure of yourself. You feel your cheeks blush, but it's different this time. Her praise is so unexpected, it leaves you speechless. Miss Nolan fixes her gaze upon you again and you feel as though she's undressing you. On the first day, seriously? Tell me, do you like to cook? Yes, but what does that have to do with being a receptionist? Nothing, that position has already been filled. What? Why did you tell me? When did that happen? Who got the job? Why didn't you tell me? When did that happen? When I lost my interview, I guess. When you got distracted and missed your interview, I guess, yeah. You lost your chance to get a job that you really wanted. You felt heartbroken. Okay, regardless, thank you for your time. Your feelings take over you like a storm. You want to get out of there as soon as possible. But I have another job for you if you're interested. What? As a cook? That was the best combo I've had in a long time. It reminded me of my childhood. You took the initiative to solve a problem and you cooked something incredible. Thank you, but I still don't understand what they has to do with the job. If the receptionist position has already been taken, Lucy's position then. I don't want you at the reception. I want you in my kitchen, replacing Lucy. Poor Lucy. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And see you guys on our next journeys.